1170 WCLN 1170 Radio and Cable Channel 16 are pleased to present We Should Know, hosted by J.W. Simmons, an upbeat, informative look at people, places, and issues facing our community. This education-based analysis of issues will remain positive and informative as we consider closely what we should know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We Should Know is on there. I want to thank you for being with us. I'm J.W. Simmons, your host. It's my pleasure to be here today and talk about a subject that is facing and impacting everyone in some way or the other. Businesses, particularly small businesses in the country over the past couple of years with the pandemic and other issues uh, are facing many times the potential for even closure. Uh, A person that's been in small business right here in the county for many years, and I'm going to say probably 50 plus years, Years is Gary Wayne Hall with Sessoms Jury. Gary Wayne, thank you for being with us today. Talk a little bit about small businesses and the impact of small businesses are having not only in communities, but the survivability of small businesses. JW, thank you for inviting me. I always enjoyed watching your show and you over the years have uh, been almost as long as I have been because you haven't been shopping for 50 years. But when you do, you shop smart and you always come to see me or whoever in the local community and that's one of the survival traits that we have is being local uh the fact that uh we're here we went to school in this area uh we do most of our businesses in this area and we as a community tend to want to strive to help those who help us so that's one of the first things i look at if i go for a car or for clothing or uh, any type of repair work that I need, I always look to see the local guy, in particular that one that has been coming to see me. And after 50 years, I've accumulated quite a bit of it. So pandemic was something that was a negative part of our business, but it had positive points in it too. Uh, the, the negative part of it was you were scared you were going to get that disease and die. Mm-hmm. So you started making arrangements about putting up the plexiglass in the store, having the hand sanitizers, uh, the mask, uh, making sure that we stayed as well as possible. And in our travels throughout, when we were to go to uh, restaurants, we always did what they advised to mask up and use the hand sanitizers, do your uh, distance, your six feet, uh, kind of observe if you see someone that's sick or hear them cough, you're going to make sure that you kind of give them a little space. So you do that. And that was the negative part that I saw. We got through the entire time and, uh, didn't have anything. My grandchildren, my daughter, my son, Deborah, we never had it. We, uh, were kind of scared a time or two. And the young lady, Ricky Lynn, that works with me, she was uh, uh, pandemic free and still is, and that's the way we are. But we still, uh, due to our guard with the mask and the hands creams and all that stuff, um, and looking where we were around to make sure of that. Uh, that was a negative. The positive part of it was uh, with Sussum's Jewelry, over the three to four months it got there and the business dropped off and I kind of scratched my head and I said, you know, we aren't hardly doing anything at all on Monday and Saturday. So I believe I'll just close on Saturday, Sunday and Monday. And it hurt some, but not enough to want to go back to opening back up. We have opened back again on Saturday. I'm still going to take Monday. At my age and your age now, you realize we've got to have a day to go see the doctor. (laughs) So... We uh we go we take time to to do that. Uh, Ricky Lynn deserves time off. She works real hard with us. Mm-hmm. Deborah's got grandchildren, and we like to make sure that we see all those things for them. And Angela needs her help. So it's a positive side of it. Is it's not all business. It's a little bit selfish every once in a while. We want to do what we do for our families and for our communities. And with that. The community understands that I, and I, everyone I talk to about saying, well, I'm going to take Saturday and Sunday and Monday. They said, you deserve it. Take it. Go ahead and do what you want mm-hmm. to. And mm-hmm. what I got with being jewel repair, I ain't got to worry about the refrigerator going out and it rotting over the weekend. So all my stuff is uh, shelf life is real good. So you come back and uh, we explain to people that's there 
in the fact that we are, I had a little bit of a health issue this year. I lost a little bit of sight in my right eye and it's dominant right eye. So I'm not doing as much in store as I was, but I'm still taking in a lot of repair. People trust me to get things done for them the way it should be. And it's taking a little bit longer for a round trip with what FedEx and UPS are charging for round trips now. It's anywhere from my, uh, we were paying $24 for the pandemic started, and now it's 48 to $55 each way. So it's $100 because I sent all my stuff out registered and insured and accountability on it. And most people want to get their stuff back in within three to four days. So that's usually what we shoot for. And uh, they're understanding now that next day, except for like watch batteries, I do most of those in the store right on, and that takes care of it. Community, uh, I can say downtown, uh, they come to me for a lot of questions about things that's kind of going on, how we've survived and how we've done what we have over the years. And again, that was the thing that I brought to your attention to start out with, mm -hmm. is being local, educated mm -hmm. here, go to church here, people see you. Uh, they know about everything about you. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's not, but mm -hmm. we take and we do what we do with it. But uh, that was some of the things that we did as far as overall with the pandemic is listen to the news, uh, see kind of what's going on. Um, there are a lot of people who's died in Sampson County from that. A lot of people who's died from it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not advertised as much in Sampson County as it is Wake and all the other places, but uh, we've lost a lot of good people because of it. It's a bad disease and you need to be on guard. I'm waiting right now. The Moderna is the one I got, and I'm waiting on the booster shot because you can believe I'm going to be one of the first ones to be standing in line to go ahead and get that. Um, too old to be taking chances now. When when I hear you, and I've, you've talked a lot about, and, and you and I have had conversations a lot about small businesses, particularly small businesses downtown, and, and I hear a theme coming through every time we have the conversation, and it's the theme is neighbors helping neighbors. It's it's almost like dependability, and the word trust comes to mind. Yeah. When, when you talk to the, and there's been some new uh, stores that opened up downtown. Um, I want you to kind of touch on that as well, but when I look at the downtown area, it's kind of a space that is continuing to evolve. Talk, talk to us about what you see downtown and what you've seen occurring downtown over the past two or three years. Well, with the, in our corner, I kind of selfish on this part. We've we've got a good good customer base. People that come in and out. I got uh, people from Duplin County, uh, Wilmington, uh, Dunn, Raleigh, Fedville, Goldsboro. I'm one of the only. Uh, jewelers, watchmakers in the store like that, and clockmakers. So I got a good base of people to come in with me. And now with Alfredo's next door to me, uh, they've got a big customer base from all over. Uh, they've attracted, I see people in and out, and I see them coming in, and I said, what you doing in Clinton? What you doing in here? Well, we're coming over to Alfredo's to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, natural cuisine, all that. Bernie's, local people just take over there. Chris and Alder Mathis, they're local people. Chubb Mathis, whenever Chubb had a restaurant business. So Audrey was uh, one of the nurses with uh, uh, Murphy Family Ventures and so on and that. So she retired and just felt like she had the energy to come back over there. They're busting it. They are tearing it up over at Bernie's now. They do a lot of catering stuff, they too. They do, and they've got it going on. It's there. She's there at 7 o'clock in the morning now. Got breakfast sandwiches. We got another place that's come in uh, where Rebecca's used to be. Uh, it's, a, it's a boutique closure. I went walked in the other day to look at that. Great line of clothes. Uh, of course, Sharon's is still mainstay around. She's not doing as much as she was. James is not doing so well, so she's having to stay and help him. So you got them, and then across the corner was Simply North Carolina, another family-based business, the Thomas. They do a great job, best ice cream in anywhere. Just unique. They, they do. You go in there and you want to get a nice cup of ice cream, and that's one of the little deals I do, my little perks that I do with my kids to come into the jewelry store and they get their ears pierced. I walk them over to uh, Simply North Carolina and get them a comb of ice cream. 
And uh, it's not maybe they were, they they don't remember the ear piercing as much so as they said, let's go to see Mr. Mm -hmm. Gary Wayne. Said he'll take us to get us some ice cream. Absolutely. And then we've got a new little, another consignment shop, florist that's next to them. I'm hoping they'll do well. I walked over and greeted them the other day. Clean, nice looking place. Uh, they got flowers and so on. And then uh, the eyeglass with the Carolina Optical that they got, Dr. Rayner. They've got people in and out of there all the time, so they stay busy. And uh, Anna Dales is doing well. And with Royals uh, gift shop and all that, made the prettiest packages of anywhere mm -hmm. I've ever seen. They put, I don't know how to make money because they put all of it in ribbon whenever they finish up. They they wrap a pretty package. And uh, so those are businesses that are there that are less than two years old downtown, and all of them seem to be thriving. And the barbershop is now open. I so. saw they had that sign out there yeah. yesterday. I might need to go see them a little yeah. bit. Anyhow, so. I, I think the downtown area and, and the survivability of it has grown and, and the, the magic to it is that you can go there and find not only one thing, but many different things. But as you pointed out earlier, you walk in there and you know people. You know them and you see them. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, the county and the city are doing their part to maintain and keep things looking good. They do a lot of different functions throughout the year to get people downtown to see what we're doing. Henry Faircloth was just the, uh, the ramrod for the roof to being done, mm. and it's finished up. Glad to see that money staying around here instead of a, you see an out of town contractor coming in. That's that's not going to buy a car or a piece of jewelry. Right. It, not here. It is somewhere else, but it's not here. But the county saw fit to have him to come in and do that, and Henry did a great job and on time. So we appreciate that. We're going to take a quick yep. break, and we're going to come back here. We're going to pick it up from there and invite folks to stay with us because when we get into uh, some more detail, and eventually we're going to talk about uh, the whole area of special that you work on. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We're talking with Gary Wayne Hall. 50-plus years in the jewelry business downtown Clinton, survivability of small businesses. We'll be back in a moment. Call a friend. Experiencing slow internet? If you have a fast internet package, the problem is most likely your wireless router. With more devices using Wi-Fi, your wireless router may not be able to deliver the speed and coverage you need. We now have the leading solution to enhance your internet experience. Using small devices in a mesh network, these Wi-Fi appliances cover just about any size home so that all your devices can operate to their fullest potential. Whole home Wi-Fi from Star Communications. Get the most out of your internet connection. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We should know who's on there. I want to thank you for being with us. We're talking about small businesses. Uh, we're talking about small businesses, not only in the sense of the services they render to us, but their survivability and the challenges that small businesses face. Uh, someone that knows quite a bit about that, uh, Gary Wayne Hall, Sesame's Jewelry, 50 plus years. Uh, if anybody knows about small businesses, survivability, uh, challenges, uh, Gary Wayne, you should know that you've, you've been there, you've done that, and you're doing that and continue to do that. Uh, in my introduction, I, I wanted to mention a while ago, too, that uh, you also uh, have volunteered your service in the past to the National Guard, and uh, we thank you for your service. There's not that many people doing that today, from what I can understand, but uh, there's a lot of folks that have done that in the past, and it's kept us stable. I want to get back to the small business thing. Downtown Clinton, there's a certain uniqueness in that you mentioned as we we're going to break the revitalization of the roof down there. Uh, and Henry Faircloth being the, the person that's making that happen, which is a local name. A lot of folks remember that name. Used to be board of uh, directors or trustee at the community college. Um, how important is it to have a structure like the courthouse, not only with its history, but the activity directly across the street from a number of small businesses that are surrounded. Uh, is that a big plus for? for Absolutely. Um, the courthouse not only attracts uh, people to come in that from out of county, but with I-40 coming down there, and they're not real happy about having to be down there, but uh, I-40 and the uh, local law enforcement uh, attract a lot of business to downtown. Mm -hmm through uh, some of the things that are going on. A lot of big arrests made on I-40. Mm -hmm. You see uh, Sheriff Thornton out front uh, quite regularly 
with a large amount of money in front of them and weapons and so on as that, that his special force has made arrangements and what that brings them is downtown. Uh, they may not want to be shopping when they're in here, but at least they uh, are getting down here and the survivability of the people who work in the courthouse, those jobs are not small paying jobs anymore. They pay very well and the people who are over there tend to shop downtown with the restaurants. Uh, I see uh, all the restaurants with Bernie's and uh, Gracie's and there's a new uh, Hispanic restaurant over on the corner next to uh, where Gracie's is. They're doing very well. Uh, and with Sharon's, they are, are there They come in and they eat and sit back and enjoy and then we we'll walk around the streets and kind of see. So yeah, the courthouse does mean a lot to us, but also the individuals that work in there, they uh, tend to spend money locally, so that helps us out. Um, one of the negatives of it is obviously uh, parking during court days. I will say that our people that are hiring one of the things that Chris Fan and uh, his uh, staff does, I see in the afternoon and the morning, they are walking across the street and parking in the free parking. And so that's something that's done. There's uh, quite a bit there. They don't seem to think uh, that it means that much to us, but parking spaces are very valuable. Uh, it tends to say back uh, 20 years ago, they were talking about a parking space is worth $500 a day. So uh, now it'll probably be $1,500 to $2,000 a day per parking space. And we've not got a lot. Uh, they, during the Christmas time, they do rove around a little bit more. Rest of the time, it's not that much unless they're parking in a handicapped parking space. It's about the only time they'll get a ticket. But uh, we're pursuing... Uh, Mary Rose had talked about why we were doing these, uh, the stuff downtown on the building and the roof that they would, would probably end up getting an officer to kind of cruise around to make sure people were moving around. Haven't seen it, but it'll happen. They'll, they'll do that. So with the, that and the other businesses that have been local, we got a, quite a few insurance companies down here, uh, that, that come in and they've been here for quite some time. Uh, it's uh, another thing about it is we're a lot cheaper than what it is being in a shopping center. So you can come down here being a small business and fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month for rent beats thirty five hundred to four thousand plus what you're having to give them percentage and all that other stuff. So we have and it makes competition a lot easier. So we're able to compete better being downtown because. It's a lower cost of running a business than it is in a shopping center. Um, shopping centers are great. A lot of people in them. I go to them. I stop to them probably every day. I go on the way mm -hmm. home. I'll stop by one and do it. But uh, if, I, if I had an IGA store like I had over in uh, Stebbin with my good buddy Alan Carroll running, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd make sure I stopped by the IGA to start out with. That's mm -hmm. a, usually local people that have mm -hmm. those. Carly C's. Yep. Uh, Great business. They came here, took over to Piggly Wiggly. Got a, in fact, uh, one of the girls that runs the buffet, or I say buffet, or the dining area, mm -hmm. uh, is Nancy Fan. Went to school with her. She does a great job out at Carly C. So can't do it. But business, all in all, for what it's done with our government buildings downtown, they are an asset to us. They are a plus, and I'm glad to see that the county and the city have elected to spend the money on the buildings that they do to maintain them because they're showing a certain pride for downtown, a pride in the community by maintaining it and spending money on it. They wouldn't spend it ruthlessly or uh, without a good warrant. And I say they're doing what they're doing because they have positive outlook for downtown Clinton. One of the things you mentioned was parking and, and I, I have a, a observation in that if you look at Clinton and the convenience of parking easily being a block from any one of the businesses you can park behind the businesses there's a couple of parking areas there it still is a great opportunity for folks that want to quick in and quick out at one of the business they want to run in to pick up something they can do it 
uh, it's much more convenient in many cases in some of the large shopping malls. It is. Uh, Chamber bought most of these parking spaces several years ago. We went in and bought a, a lot of the parking lots the city bought for the convenience of the customer. Uh, and if you go like out to uh, Shamrock, uh, that's a little bit closer. But when you go to Walmart Shopping Center, you're going to walk 100 yards most of the time to get in the store. No big deal. They got three or four different doors to go in and out. They got them in the back door and all that. But uh, we are accessible, and it's because of the forefathers that they're – long range view of what to do as far as parking goes. They bought up all the property they could and made parking lots out of it. Used to be horse stables, now they're parking yeah. lots. Yeah, and, and the evolution, I think you just touched on something that's very important, is the historic value of downtown Clinton. There's a lot of those buildings been there for quite a few mm -hmm. years and there, there's a significant historic value to that area. Well, you know Dr. Yang and his wife are building an art gallery. And one of the things the historic people went in and I, I'm pretty sure, I'm not positive, but I think they have built a, uh, a house or an apartment building above it. And one of the things that historic people did was back off in front of it and look at it. And because they elevated and built a second story to it, they didn't want to see that second story from the front. They wanted to leave the historic part of it like that. So the add-on they did was to add on space but not to decrease the historic look of it. So mm -hmm. they fixed that second story so you can't see it from the front. It's interesting you mention that because I've had folks to, to bring the topic up, uh, the, the viability of apartments and living areas upstairs in downtown Clinton. Well, you know, the old Van Ford building, I kind of thought they might have been moving on that. Uh, they may still be, but they're, they're doing some apartment-type stuff on that. They put an elevator in it, and they're fixing it up. I'm sure probably codes and zones and safety reasons. It's taking a while longer to do it than what they expect to. But I got a feeling before long there'll probably be some apartment buildings in that that they can use. You've been you've been there, Gary Wayne, for for quite a few years. Uh, Sesame Jewelry was around before Gary Wayne, but you, well, you've been there probably what thirty plus years or more. Forty eight years. Forty eight year, years or more. What have you seen that's been the most significant change since you've been there? And as well, you, in my change, we looked at we've lost Belks, Roses, mm -hmm. Leader Brothers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, lost the big stores that bring in uh, a lot of different people, but they've all gone out there, but. Uh, by staying up to date, uh, doing things, uh, keeping modern, nice pieces of jewelry and clocks and mm -hmm. still doing a decent job repairing stuff, it attracts people back to me. In fact, I've got grandfathers bringing their grandchildren into the store and introduce them to me now. So, um, And that's it. You, you maintain, you keep on pushing and hopefully everything will kind of work on out with you. But losing the big stores, then you've kind of got to buddy up and work a little bit harder in order to keep people coming back because if, if you don't, they haven't got as much to come downtown to as. But we've got a lot of great places to eat. Mm -hmm. And we've got Bernie's, Alfredo's, Gracie's, Sharon's, uh, right around the corners, Highway 55, so, uh, yeah. Co coffee, ice cream, and uh, drinks right there on the corner. The best ice cream you'll ever eat anywhere in your life, simply North Carolina. We're going to take a, uh, another break here in just a second, and I want to come back and kind of set the stage. I want to talk a little bit about that, carrying that legacy on that we've talked about in the in the first half. The second half of the show also, of which is coming up, I want to kind of zero in on helping folks understand what you do particularly at Sesame's Jewelry and the speciality of it. I mean, there's just things there uh, that you're doing, uh, in fact, you've done for me in the past, that you, you're not going to go anywhere else and get because you don't have that dependability. We'll be back in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We're talking with Gary Wayne Hall, Sesame's Jewelry downtown Clinton, about small business. And also, we're going to touch on Small Business Saturday or Shop Small Business Saturday. It's 27th of November. We'll be back in a moment. 
Every year, 7 million 911 calls are made in North Carolina. 911, what's your emergency? Will you answer the call? Every second counts. You can be that lifeline. People in crisis look to us for assistance. We provide guidance and support until physical help can arrive at the scene. Join us and make a difference in our community. Be the calm in the chaos. Be the voice in the dark. It's the hardest career you'll ever love. Will you answer the call? Discover more at it.nc.gov slash 911 careers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're talking today with Gary Wayne Hall. Um, many people know that name. It's succinctly important, directly associated with something called Sesame's Jewelry, which has been around 50 plus years. Gary Wayne's been there 48 of uh, years or more uh, in, involved in small business downtown. Saturday, November 27th is Shop Small Business or Small Business Saturday. The idea behind that is uh, the unique opportunity for <clears throat> people to su support local businesses. Uh, you've got one of those businesses. Uh, along with that, Gary Wayne, you got a business that requires a certain speciality. Uh, tell us about what you do and the specific background and training you've got that people need to understand it's important when they go in and whether it's fixing their watch or resetting a diamond, or purchasing a diamond. Uh, tell us about the speciality you've got in that area, and over the years, the contacts and friends you've made. Um, JD again, <laughs> JW again. It goes back to uh, the years and kind of feeling things out and doing what we do. Uh, I, Deborah and I got married, and I was in sales, and uh, Mr. Sessions proposed to me that if I were to go to school in Goldsboro at the time, they had a watchmaking and jewelry repair class over there. And it was two years, and uh, he said if I were to go uh, and graduate, that he'd have a job for me. So uh, I was living in Clinton at the time, so for two years I would get up in the morning at 5 o'clock and I'd drive to Goldsboro and be there till 3 o'clock in school. And then I'd come back and do an apprenticeship working for him, and obviously I learned more from him than I did going to school, but you still needed to have a degree in this. You had to be a licensed trade person then if you had a jewelry store. Uh, he was trained, self-taught by what he did, and he was very good at it, and uh, I learned a lot from him. I went on to work with them and by coming back in the afternoon and working with them, I, I, if I had a problem with something in school, I could come back and be able to work on that. So watchmaking and then jewelry repair, uh, I went to a place in Florida and I got a degree in uh, advanced jewelry repair in uh, Jupiter, Florida. And that was another day, like all other schools, they give you enough to work on and then you come back and you're going to enhance it by doing that. Uh, Diamond School, that was a three-week school. I went with a friend of mine, Buddy's Jewelry, uh, Buddy Turner, he and I went down to Miami, uh, went down to uh, Myrtle Beach, and that was a three-week uh, GIA course, Jim Logical Institute of America, in identifying diamonds and grading them. Uh, of course, when you come back, that's another thing you need to have the equipment. So I had to go out and make a sizable purchase on uh, identifying them. And then there's always the four C's of diamonds, cut and clarity, carrot weight and color. Uh, and now you've got to have, be able to determine whether they are lab grown or if they are uh, taking a diamond and if it's enhanced. How hard is that? That's uh, it's pretty tough. Uh, these, these lab created about the only way you can be able to tell them is if you send them to Gemological Institute of America. Right now, they don't have enough machinery out to test to make sure whether they're lab created or if they are uh, enhanced. Enhanced, uh, you can kind of spot those because most of the time they have like a big cleavage on the inside and they epoxy fill them. They'll fill that hole with epoxy and you can kind of see that. And another thing, uh, it'll scare you to death because I've done it before. Uh, if you apply heat to it, then that epoxy will discolor. 
say when you think you're working on a three carat diamond and you throw it about 2400 degrees to it going to retip a prong and all of a sudden it looks like a piece of chalk it's a scary moment uh because you gotta you gotta explain that to the customer that may not know that well the customer when they buy it if they were told that when they bought it it was clarity enhanced was supposed to tell me that it's clarity enhanced and that way I would know not to put any heat to it. Right, right. That one didn't tell me. And then I got to question him about it and I asked him how much to pay for it. And I said, something ain't quite right about that. And I said, what you paid for it and what's supposed to be a three carat diamond is way off on numbers. And I got to question him and they said, well, it was something about enhancement. I said, Whew. thank the Lord. So anyhow, I found out and I sent it back to the company that it did it and they redid it at no charge. So they wow. fixed it up. So we got all that done. A little bit more about them now. If the big diamonds come in, I always ask them questions about that. And they're most of the big diamonds when they do that. Uh, the lab created another thing. There's nothing in them. They're made by man. They're lab created, and they're identical to what a diamond is. Instead of a, instead of five billion years to create, the, they can do it in five years in a lab where they've got the pressure and all that mm -hmm. like that. So they, they are, and they have the the four things you talked about, the clarity, the mm -hmm. cut, and, I, and yeah. color and all that. Another thing you do is you look at those and you see how pretty you are, then you go ahead and start saying, this might be a created diamond. So yeah. they're, just, yeah. they're just that pretty. They take the heat the way they do, they have the hardness, they have everything about them, the facets and all that are the same as the other ones. So the, really the only way you're gonna know it is that. Difference is it's price. Um, a two carat, I just sold one that was clarity enhanced. Not a clarity enhanced, but it was uh, lab created. A two carat, I was able to sell it for eight eight thousand dollars. A two carat natural diamond of the same quality would have been thirty two thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you're getting the same look, but you know, some people would say we still want it. I I offer it. I offer whatever they want. So that's the thing you ask, why do we survive? What will we do? You go with the roll, you go with yeah. the times, and the times right now on some of that is that. And uh, a lot of uh, the people that are out there that's got the genuine diamonds, and they are scared to go different places that uh, someone may see it and may try and rob them. I have identified and we have uh, made jewelry to what they have that's the $100,000 diamond for $10,000 diamond. And they wear that and they enjoy it and still look the same thing. And they keep the other they locked keep, up somewhere. keep the other locked up. Wow. Yeah. So, nature of the beast. Do what you do. Does does diamonds and jewelry and those kinds of things, because here, you know, as we're having this conversation, people are thinking strong about Christmas. They're thinking, well, I, I've got to get something. And, and I, I guess I'm kind of in that category with everybody else. I want to do something that's fairly nice. But then again, you don't want, you're not, you don't want to go overboard. And then you got to look at budget and everybody's got to look at their own budget. But is is now the time that folks need to really think about uh, seriously yeah. those kinds of things? You go ahead now because uh, there are going to be a shortage of what we call melee, mm -hmm. which are diamonds that are like 05 points, 5 one hundredths less. They're the little halo diamonds that mm -hmm. go around a lot of the diamonds. They are made in India, and India is shut down right now. Uh, Vietnam... Uh, makes all the ribbons and boxes and all that. You can't get ribbons and boxes anymore from uh, Vietnam because of the pandemic. Uh, India, uh, Russia, uh, they bought up tons of diamonds and they put them on boxes, so on. they created, but that's the reason a lot of this lab created and the uh, enhanced diamonds are out there is because uh, the other ones are trying to put a block on it to drive the prices up. So they counter them by doing that, and they, they're doing real well with them. They're putting these other diamonds in 14 karat gold mountings, platinum mountings, because of the hardness and the durability of them. If they were cheap and they were not able to take them and put them inside of a nice mounting, then they wouldn't be doing it, but they're putting it into regular diamond mountings for Money reasons. Do, do you have folks that often come in or occasionally come in that, that have 
uh, stones or, or jewelry of different kinds and just get you to give a, a give them an idea of what the value is of what they got every you, day. I'm, I'm just wondering if that's yeah. the kind of thing that <clears throat> that people look at you and say, help me understand what I have here. Yeah, every day. <clears throat> um, you know, I'm, I know I can't get it all, but a lot of people appreciate my opinion and they've gone somewhere else and maybe in the stroke of the moment, they bought another piece of jewelry from somebody else and then they get to scratching their heads. So, well, I wonder if I got what I would do. Bring it to me and ask me if it's real. I'll tell them if it's real or not. And if they want a value on it, then that'll cost them. Yeah. Because I have to sit down and evaluate the stones and insurance companies. Uh, on appraisals, if I do an appraisal, they're going to sit there and they want to know, did you do that online? Did you do that? Did you see that particular item? When you do a, when you do a certified appraiser, appraisal, the item has to be in my hand in front of me to say, yes, that was there. And it's not from where they call me on the telephone and say, look at so-and-so, I bought this from so-and-so. How much is it worth? I'm going to say, I don't know. Mm-hmm. If you bring it to me, I'll be glad to tell you, but I can't tell you on the telephone whether it's real or not. So some people understand, some people don't. The ones that don't just as soon as stay on the telephone. So for people that are paying uh, fifty to a hundred thousand dollars for jewelry, most of those folks are going to have some kind of appraisal. I want to I want to come back uh, to our, to our next segment. We're going to take a break, but I want to come back and I want you to touch on that because again, you, there, there's this kind of stuff is out there. People own a lot of um, should I say wealth with jewelry and items. But the appraisal part sometimes is the part maybe they overlook. Yeah. And it, then when something happens, it gets lost, it disappears, whatever. The insurance company is not going to be valid unless they do have some kind of valid document mm-hmm. verifying it. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, I want you to answer that question. And then we're going to move on to some other issues. But uh, this, this is a subject, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think everybody needs to, at this time, especially this time of the year, As you uh, look at presents or gifts or things you're going to buy, or maybe things you have, uh, this is the time of the year that maybe you could uh, benefit from the services of Sesame Jewelry Downtown. We'll be back in a moment. Stay tuned. To get the most out of your electronic devices, you need a strong internet connection and a protected home Wi-Fi network. You need high-speed internet from Star. Star has the fastest, most affordable high-speed internet service available for all your devices. We have no long-term contracts or high-pressure sales. Our service speaks for itself, and switching is hassle-free. We take care of everything with free installation from a local company. High-speed internet from Star. Internet at the speed of life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I want to thank you for being with us. I want to thank you for being here each and every week as we bring you We Should Know on Tuesdays at 2.30. It's aired again at 7 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday on Star Communications Channel 16. Also, a lot of folks uh, remind us that they appreciate the information that we bring and to a large degree, in many cases, the education we bring. Uh, Of course, today's show is one of those shows. As well, the comments you make and the, the questions you send Please continue to use we should know edu at gmail.com. We should know edu at gmail.com. And again, if you'd like, continue to send us a card or a, uh, a note about something or an observation or a suggestion, you can send that to Post Office Box 1482, Clinton, North Carolina. Just address it to We Should Know or WSK, and uh, we'll be glad to take a look at that. And if it's something we can do or get on or help with, we're more than happy to do that continued thank you for your support for this show we're now uh in their 11th year mark uh and been doing it for quite a few weeks and have enjoyed talking to you and uh thanking you for your comments today we're talking with gary wayne hall uh sesame jewelry gary wayne your name and sesame jewelry are synonymous your name and jewelry and diamonds and watches and more importantly fixing stuff or tell me what i need to do with this or how important is this? Uh, do I need, as we went to break, uh, do I need insurance on this? <clears throat> it is often probably things you hear. Yeah, well, I get uh, quite a few people come in every week that uh, will bring things to me. Being I buy gold, and that gold's at $1,750 an ounce now. 
Um, and silver is $24 an ounce. Uh, whenever I was telling you, when I first walked, went in business, uh, it was $36 an ounce for gold. So anybody back 50 years ago that had $36, they're looking at $17.50. Probably if you put it in the interest and all that, it'd probably be about equaled out the same. But it's kind of nice to go in there and bring out that one ounce gold coin and fill of it and kind of rub it rather than look at a piece of paper and say, well, that's what it is. And then you got to give percentage to whoever. So, uh, gold and diamonds in the long term have been good investments for people to make on the steady things. I had a young lady yesterday that was in the store and she brought her wedding set, which I buy a lot of wedding sets and a lot of wedding bands off of failed deals. So 50% of them are usually going to fail. So they'll end up having their engagement jewelry or their wedding bands. And uh, most of the time, if they're going to get remarried, obviously that's something they don't want in the house with the new mate. So mm -hmm. I buy a lot of jewelry. Mm. And a lot of them are a little disappointed. You always, uh, if you if you pay too much for it when you bought it, you, you're you going to reap what you sow whenever you get ready to get rid of it. So you always want to kind of make sure you do. And this young lady was well pleased with what she had, and I paid her uh she got twenty two hundred dollars for her old wedding set, and she was she had the paperwork on it. So when she had it, she originally bought it. Uh, it was like twenty eight hundred dollars. She paid for it whenever they got married, and she got back twenty two hundred. So she wore it for fifteen years, and it only cost her six hundred dollars to have it, something she enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So you get a good, pretty good return off of your money, but again, it depends on what you pay for it and who you sell it to. So if you were to bring it down, I always will look at it, let you know what it is, let you know if I'm buying diamonds or if I'm just buying gold. A lot of times we're diamond poor, so I tell you I'm not interested in that. And uh, we'll weigh up the gold and see what it comes out to, and I'll give you a price on it. And that's something you got where you can go on and then go from one place to another and then see what the value of it is. Maybe somebody would want some more than I do, and they might pay you more, but we pay what a market is. Uh, the platinum market and gold market and all that's in there, so you want to identify what it is, and then you, if you decide if it's a new piece you want to appraise, make sure where you buy it from that you get a receipt, and you can take that to the insurance agent, and most of the time on a receipt, they have the item, what it is, how much it weighs, how much you paid for it. Uh, sometimes the retail value is way more than what the insurance value would be on it. So you'd be overpaying for your insurance on it. So you'd want to have one insurance value and retail value. Insurance is what? When you buy something, you buy a piece of jewelry, you put down what it is. When If you have a loss or a theft on it, you go to the insurance company. The insurance company is not going to pay you what that retail value is. <coughs> They're going to try and replace it for you. And then if they can replace it for you, they'll buy it for you. If they can't, then they'll give you a market price on what that piece of jewelry is that they can get it for. Mm -hmm. So if it's appraised at $5,000 and they can buy it for $2,500, then they'll either replace it for you. At we'll that, give you the $2,500. We'll give you $2,500. So if you're over-insured, that's good for the agent, but it's not good for you for what you have to pay with particularly. And you can ask your insurance agent what they got is just because you buy it don't mean it's necessarily insured. You have to give them some reasonable uh, piece of paper or jewelry that says this is it. Take a picture of it. Just like if you uh, your house, take a, your uh, smartphone, go out through the, out the house, scan what you have. Put your picture on it, your hand on it, take it to your insurance agent and say, this is what I got. And then if it gets stolen, then you've got to identify on it rather than sit there and say, well, I think I had it. So, you know, there yeah. you know you got it. Now, that's a way of factualizing exactly what you Yeah, got. yeah. So you do that. Um, and then uh, the other thing of it is, I'll go back to something you said a while ago about how we are able to do what we do uh, in small business. I don't know of a small business owner around here that has not been involved somehow with their community or their church or whatever. Whenever I first moved here, Jimmy Matthews was my neighbor, and Jimmy walked over and asked me if I'd like to join the JCs. 
Mm-hmm. And that kind of got me started on things. So I became president of JC's. I went on to, as you said, about the National Guard. I stayed in it for over 21 years. Been well rewarded for that, as well as my years as a JC. I uh, got involved with my church um, and uh, became a mason and a shriner. So all the things that I just told you are things that you do for your community. I've not seen anyone who's selfish, who's been very successful as far as in a small community. They may go back over there and check out and see what they got in the market every once in a while, but you know, by staying active, uh, George Williams, who's 104 years old, good friend, avid golfer, playing golf when he was 100, still is, sharp as a tack right on, and he just don't move around as well as it is, but George says, you keep on moving. Mm-hmm. You just don't, mm-hmm. you keep on moving, and that's the way you're doing your business. You look and see what's happening. I went over to, uh, I was in uh, Wallace the other day to get something done over there, but I stopped by a jewelry store over there, and while I was in the there, I said, well, I'm going to stop by and kind of see what's going on with them. Didn't have a watch in the store. She said, we don't sell watches anymore. And there was a lady that happened to come in there and needed a watch battery while she was needing a watch battery. This lady looked at her and I said, what she looked at and she said, this watch is not working. I said, I looked at this lady. I said, ma'am, I hate to tell you. I said, but I could fix that watch for you in front of the other lady in the jewelry yeah, store. Because they didn't have an and idea what was going on. They didn't have any idea what was going on. I was in there and she said, well, hi. She handed me her watch. I wrote it down on a little piece of paper for her, carried it back, went back, put a battery in it, called her up, and I said, you can come pick your watch up. She said, well, how much is that? And I said, $14. Come get it. So she had about a $450 watch that she had given to her for retirement. And if I had not been standing there. And she would have never known. She would have never known, and she'd gone back and threw it in a cigar box and it'd been in one of these $5 jewelry boxes that you see at the yard sales. Yep. So... Anyhow, you keep on moving, you stay in touch, and you see what the community likes, what they want, and they'll tell you. There's no question that they'll tell you. And the the thing with uh, with Sesame's Jewelry and local businesses downtown, nine times out of ten, you can pick up the phone and call them, or you know somebody that knows somebody that can get you the information you need no matter what time of day it is or time of night. You might be closed, but if, if something comes up, you can get information, and that's the big thing I think that folks are looking now is is va- the value of factual, real information. We're we're coming uh, to a close here shortly. I want to give you about a minute, uh, Gary Wayne. Anything you want to cover that we've missed to kind of wrap up for us here in about a minute. Well, JW, I appreciate you having me on here today, and uh, let me mouth at you a little bit and tell you about the things that are going on with Sesame Jewelry and downtown. Uh, the community has been extremely good to Deborah and myself over the years and Mr. and Ms. Sessoms. Uh, of course, we've tried to return the favor by offering a good service and continuing to. Um, at 70 years old now, I um, had it this year, I lost a little bit of sight in my right eye and the doctor told me I needed to kind of get my blood pressure down. But uh, I'm still active. I'm still in the business, and but I can't leave the community. Someone, uh, Clinton, I was born here in Sampson County, and I'm going to die here in Sampson County. And I'd kind of like to leave a little bit of a reputation as being a good jeweler along the way and a good friend to the community as well as Deborah. She's on the Sampson Community College uh, board. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's helping them out. She's done a lot with that, and uh, we, we appreciate the possibility of being able to help. I wish I was as healthy as I was in the National Guard again. So those were good old days. And I appreciate being an opportunity to serve my country. Well, we appreciate all you've done and all the support that you've given to a lot of people. And, and, and again, I think the the crux of our show is to remind folks that November 27th is Small Business Saturday. And it's a way that people that are looking presents or gifts can say that day, either reach out or just stop in a store and say, hey, appreciate what you're doing. Thank you for being here. Thank you for helping increase the cash flow. And I'll clean your jewelry while you wait for free. Outstanding. <laughs> right there, so we call that an incentive. Thank you for being with us today. And we're going to go uh, 
close. And as we do, we'll encourage people to reach you. Can you give them a quick telephone number? 910-592-5249. You got to dial 910 now. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us. We look forward to seeing you again next week right here with a brand new show with information and education to help you. And as always, may God bless. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of We Should Know with host J.W. Simmons. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion regarding this or any episode, please send your emails to we should know edu at gmail.com. And remember to tune in every Tuesday at 2.30 for another informative episode of We Should Know.